we're going to, uh, in this video, have a look at how we update the Eclipse S1000D for FrameMaker. It's important that it is, it is updated properly. The application is plugged into an existing, to another application, and therefore it is essential that this procedure is followed. As we've already stated, it is essential that you update the application correctly. And this shows, uh, this video is going to show how you do that. And it, uh, it covers the, the uh, updating on, on a standalone computer. There is another video which shows you how to install it for the first time. Before you start updating, you need to find the installer. It's the same file that's used for installing for a fresh install of Eclipse for S1000. So it's contained in that zip file that we spoke about before. Um, and you either get it by downloading the file from the Mecon FTP site or being sent the CD from Mecon. As we said before, it's a two-stage process. You can uninstall uh, the application from FrameMaker in two ways. Uh, but by running the Eclipse S1000D for FrameMaker installer, or alternatively, by running via the control panel remove programs option. We're going to use that first method. So first of all, we've located the installer, and we're going to start it now by running as administrator, as before. And the installer will start. Um, I must now, if I actually want to run the installer, it extracts the various files required, and then it prevent, presents us with a screen which says uninstall application or install other options. Now, we just want to uninstall the application now. So if we now select next, it will start to uninstall. It takes all the files out from the hard drive that we're there to start with. There are two things which you should know at this stage. It does not remove the ISO view plugin that we install. So that's the end of the uninstallation program. The other thing that you should know is that it, if you have uh, the application installed on more than one version of FrameMaker, it removes the application from all of them. At this point, it's worth checking to see whether the latest patches have been installed on FrameMaker. It's something which is quite often forgotten. You don't get notification necessarily of the updates. So what we're going to do now is to have a look to see whether in fact the updates have been made. You can find out whether in fact you do have the latest patch installed by going to Help, this is Windows 2015, and going then to the Updates option. When you click on that, um, a window opens and it will go and check online to see if you've got the latest uh, patches installed. When it's finished checking, you'll get a window something like this. And you'll see here it says your applications are all up to date as checked less than a minute ago in this particular case. So you know at this point that in fact you do have all the patches installed. If that was not the case, you'll be given the option to update. So now we've uninstalled the application. So as before, we need to run this application as administrator. We're now asked if we want to run it, and away it goes. So you'll be already familiar with some of this. But this time, uh, and we've already got the license installed. It doesn't uninstall that. So we need it without changing the license settings. It detects the latest version of FrameMaker. Um, because ISOView is already there, we can deselect that, and, but I'll put that Mecon database in because it's a very useful program. It now in, puts all the various background files onto the hard drive and some files within the FrameMaker environment. And when it's done that, you'll see that it kicks in the other part of the install.
So it's starting Frame Maker now, and it'll also start the console, which, if you remember, gives you all of the uh, information about what stage the installer's got to. Now, one of the things that uh, you will note over a period of time um, is that, in fact, the installation takes progressively longer and longer. And this is because every time uh, S1000D updates uh, the spec uh, and puts out another issue, then we have to install all the necessary parts of the program that work with the new bit. And that, of course, does that excludes uh, also uh, new features that we put in and stuff like that. So the, applic the installer is actually getting larger. Uh, and the length of time taken to install uh, the actual application is also getting longer. What we're going to do now is to leave it there and pick it up when it's finished. So we can see now that it's reached the end of its process. Um, so we don't need to go any further than this. And we'll, we can close it in the, in the way we did before by clicking on the installer. When the um, installation program gets to the end, do we have this uh, no, uh, do you want to restart the computer? Once again, um, it depends. Mostly you won't need to do that. So we'll select the no. Uh, it gives us a warning that there might be some malfunctions, but we'll leave it at that. So there's the console, which we haven't shut. We got to the end of that. It went straight through that. And uh, what we were able to do then was to say no to that. So that um, is the application installed um, and updated. Where the end user of this application is not the person who installed it, uh, then this next step may well be necessary, copying the structured apps file FrameMaker product structured apps file to the user structured apps area. Whether this stage in the process is necessary depends very much on the security levels um, that is, have been applied to the machine, the version of Windows, and also the version of FrameMaker. Where security is uh, quite high, then often the person has been will have been allocated their own user area. Um, and that's determined by having a separate logon. Now, under the later versions of FrameMaker, it was necessary to have a mechanism for copying the structured apps file, the FrameMaker one, through to the user area. And so each user who is not the one who installed the application will need to do this application. It's done through the menu option. Uh, which you'll find, and we've got it ringed there on the, on the slide. So here now you can see uh, FrameMaker 2015, and it is running on a machine which has Windows 10 installed. So there is that need, because of the way Windows 10 works and the way FrameMaker 2015 works, to copy that material from the structured apps file into the user area. And we achieve that by going to the Eclipse S1000D menu and then just clicking on the Copy FM Structure to User Structure Apps. And you'll see, once again, you'll recognize this as the log console that we create. And you'll get the message uh, which tells you what's happening and what it's doing. So you can see that it's actually copying the material through to the user area Structure Apps file. So you can see now that it's actually got to the end of its process, um, the last bit here, and it's now disconnected. So we can shut this down, um, unless you particularly want to save the log. Um, and so now it says copy the structure after file. Now what's going to happen now then, if I click on, when I click on OK, it will then shut FrameMaker down, so that in fact FrameMaker then can uh, restart and read the user's um, structured apps file. We won't uh, restart it now because that's the end of the installation process. We have recently um, initiated a system whereby <clears throat> when you update the application 
um, you get a window come up like this which shows you what has been changed in the application. Now this is the um, update window for version 10 and it tells you about the new features and some of the fixes that have been put in. It also includes information about previous um, applications. Now we've introduced this because we recognize that um, some people uh, never see the information which is sent beforehand which says actually what we have done. So sometimes there are some quite large um, innovations uh, that we have achieved um, that, that in fact make using this application so much easier than it was before uh, and put some more productivity tools in. So we thought we would do this. Clearly if you don't want to see it again then you just uh, click on the do not show this again. So we've reached the end of the update process. We've uninstalled and then reinstalled the application and it's now completely up to date and you'll be able to use it with all the latest uh, additions and increased functionality. Thank you for looking at this video. Um, I hope you found it useful.